Although the 21st century United States is, as we intimately know, brimming with newly found wealth from billionaires across the commercial spectrum, there's a certain allure to learning about the sagas of the old money set of America's wealthy. For in many ways their ability to retain and even expand wealth over epochs is much more impressive than your increasingly everyday tech bro billionaire driving his Tesla through Austin, Texas or cruising down Miami Beach's Ocean Avenue in an Aventador. Now, as you've likely heard, the term old money refers to those wealthy households whose fortunes are often as deeply entrenched as the founding stones of America itself. The mystique they project is about far more than their formidable assets. It's the rich history, the impressive lineage and the lasting legacy that sets old money apart from the newly minted wealthy. However, the history of old money in America is indeed painted with bold strokes of innovation, entrepreneurial spirit and, of course, a touch of serendipity. The wealth amassed by the five families we're about to delve into is founded upon seemingly disparate industries. Gunpowder, print media, oil, sweets, and humble grains. An eclectic blend indeed, but utterly captivating. So I invite you to join me as we tread the corridors of time here on today's episode of Old Money Luxury and explore how the five richest old money families in America made their fortunes. First on our list is the illustrious DuPont family, with a story as explosive as the industry that begot their wealth. If you've ever pondered over a non-stick pan or admired a glamorous nylon stocking, then you have been touched by the innovation of the Duponts. Their saga begins with Eleuthera Irene Dupont, a man with a vision far beyond the horizon of his era. Fleeing the throes of the French Revolution, he sailed across the Atlantic and turned his gaze to gunpowder manufacturing. And did it pay off? It certainly did. The gunpowder mills by the Brandywine Creek started off modestly, supplying munitions for the War of 1812. But before you could say bang, the DuPonts were America's largest black powder manufacturer. And what shrewd timing it was, for this was in an era where gunpowder wasn't just for wars, but for infrastructure, for clearing land, laying rails and more. The DuPont name became synonymous with quality, leading their products to be in high demand. However, the DuPonts didn't just rest on their explosive laurels. From black powder, they moved into dynamite, and then, under the discerning leadership of the astute Pierre Samuel Dupont, they ventured into chemicals and materials science. Indeed, we're talking about transformative products like Teflon, Kevlar and Freon. Even now, the Dupont clan continues to dabble in a myriad of ventures. The Dupont family's reach is extensive and varied, spanning sectors from agriculture to nutrition and from advanced materials to biofuels. Family members hold esteemed positions in a wide array of organizations and their philanthropic contributions have significantly shaped American culture, education and public policy. However, alongside this prestigious legacy, there have been instances of controversy. These include environmental disputes related to their chemical operations, questions about their business ethics and notably the infamous wrestling scandal involving John E. Dupont. His tragic actions and subsequent legal case brought unexpected attention to the family. These controversies, while a part of their rich and multifaceted history, serve to highlight the complex nature of such a prominent legacy. Yet, it's a powerful name indeed, the DuPonts, we must say. With a legacy that's impacted everything from your kitchen to the global chemical industry, their fortune speaks to the power of innovation, the willingness to adapt, and the art of seizing opportunity. Let's now delve into the saga of the Hursts, a family that has indelibly marked the landscape of American media. At the helm of this family's meteoric rise was the visionary William Randolph Hearst. With a blend of audacity and entrepreneurial genius, he transformed a humble newspaper from San Francisco into an impressive media juggernaut. Hearst was not one to rest on his laurels, however. His penchant for yellow journalism, his propensity for the sensational, and his uncanny ability to tap into the zeitgeist of the public sentiment formed the foundation of his success. His indomitable spirit saw the Hearst influence permeating beyond newspapers, penetrating the realms of magazines, radio, film, and television. Each move strategic, much like a chess player setting the board for an inevitable checkmate. The Hearst Corporation, in the present day, stands as a crucially integral aspect of the media landscape. Its presence felt across digital marketing, cable networks, healthcare and real estate. But make no mistake, the Hearsts are not solely defined by their media empire. 
They've marked their influence in philanthropy, politics, and the shaping of public policies, nurturing education and fueling social progress. One of the pet projects closest to the family's heart, from the earliest days of their patriarch's dominance, has been art. William Randolph Hearst's affinity for art was legendary, and over the years he gathered an extraordinary collection that reflected both his profound understanding and his eclectic taste in art. From ancient Greek vases to Renaissance tapestries, Gothic sculptures to historical manuscripts, his collection was diverse and extensive. Hearst Castle, his palatial estate, stands as a remarkable showcase of this collection, housing an astounding array of artifacts from different periods and cultures. Furthermore, interest in art was not purely aesthetic, it was strategic. He understood that art could be an investment, a means to preserve and grow wealth. This insight guided his acquisitions and shaped the family's art holdings. Over time, the Hearsts have managed their art collection astutely, leveraging it to maintain and expand their fortune. This brings us to the present day and an intriguing question. How can we, without the wealth of a media mogul, share in Hearst's passion for art? After all, the question becomes even more compelling in the current day. The fine art market has continued to climb globally, even soaring past its pre-pandemic levels just a few weeks ago. It's resulted in huge paydays for billionaires as it's grown. But the most remarkable story comes from a Banksy piece handing back a 32% net return. Not to the DuPonts or the Hearsts. A 32% return paid out to everyday investors. Forbes and the New York Times have both written about the platform making it possible. Today's sponsor, Masterworks. That 32% Banksy was actually Masterworks' very first sale. But since they've racked up 13 in total, with recent net returns of 10, 13, and 35%. In fact, every Masterworks exit to date has returned a profit to their investors. Investors who didn't need millions of dollars or an art degree. With several more sales already this year, Masterworks offerings can sell out in hours due to demand. But right now you can get priority access to skip the wait below. A tantalizing proposition, if I do say so myself. And now, Let's shift our gaze to another legendary name in American wealth, the Rockefellers. It all began with John D. Rockefeller, a name that even today, my friends, is associated with an astonishing level of affluence. John D. was not merely rich. He was, by many metrics, the richest of all time. And how did he amass such an enviable fortune? Why, as you probably know, oil, a.k.a. black gold. John D. Rockefeller was a man of ambition and tenacity. At a time when others were just recognizing the potential of oil, he was already establishing Standard Oil, a behemoth that would redefine the American industrial landscape. Under his eagle-eyed oversight, Standard Oil became a colossal monopoly, controlling 90% of all oil in the United States. But the Rockefellers didn't just stop at oil. Over the years, they ventured into a broad array of industries and investments, from real estate to banking, philanthropy to politics. They've demonstrated an uncanny ability to diversify, to adapt and to flourish, a testament to their savvy investment acumen. And today, even with the monopoly long dissolved, the Rockefeller name retains its golden sheen. The descendants of John D. Rockefeller continue to be significant players in various fields. They serve on the boards of renowned institutions, support environmental causes, champion public health and much more. And of course, their philanthropic endeavors are truly impressive, a legacy from John D. himself, who believed in giving back to society. The Rockefellers are a living embodiment of the notion that old money doesn't have to be static. They've leveraged their fortune in innovative ways, adapted to the times, and continue to make their mark on society. And in doing so, they've ensured that the Rockefeller name remains not just a symbol of immense wealth, but also of enduring influence and impactful philanthropy. And now let's travel from the gritty world of oil to the sweet delight of confectionery. I present to you the Mars family, a name that's likely brought more than a few smiles to your face over the years. You may not think of candy bars as a route to wealth, but the Mars family would beg to differ. Frank C. Mars, the patriarch, was a man with a sweet tooth and an even sweeter dream. He began his journey in the early 20th century, selling hand-dipped chocolates out of his Tacoma, Washington kitchen. From these humble beginnings, Mars Incorporated grew, 
buoyed by Mars's tireless spirit and vision. The Mars family didn't merely create a confectionery company, they built a global empire. Today, Mars Incorporated is a household name, its delightful array of products gracing supermarket shelves across the globe. We're talking about Snickers, M&M's, Milky Way and so much more. If you've got a favorite candy bar, odds are it's a Mars creation. But it isn't all about chocolates and sweets. Over the years, the Mars family expanded their business portfolio into other areas such as pet care, food products and even symbioscience. They've proven that the key to enduring wealth lies in diversification and adaptation, much like our other old money families. Today, the Mars family members are not just successful entrepreneurs, they're discreet billionaires. They've taken a step back from the day-to-day -day running of the company, entrusting it to non-family members. However, they remain integral to strategic decision-making, ensuring their sweet legacy endures. The Mars family teaches us a valuable lesson. To build a lasting fortune, you don't necessarily need oil wells or sprawling media empires. Sometimes, all it takes is a humble chocolate bar and a dream. A simple yet profound reminder that wealth often lies where passion and innovation intersect. After all, who wouldn't want to be a billionaire in chocolate? And now, let's turn our attention to our final old money titan, the Cargill Macmillan family. Unlike our previous moguls of confectionery, oil and media, their tale is one deeply rooted in the grains of the earth. William W. Cargill was the man behind it all. In the post-Civil War era, he saw an opportunity in the grain storage business. It may not sound glamorous, but therein lies the beauty. Cargill took a seemingly mundane industry and with a combination of foresight and hard work, forged an empire. Today, Cargill Inc. is one of the largest privately held corporations in the United States. They have their fingers in a veritable pie of industries, from agricultural commodities and trading to health and pharmaceuticals. This family-run corporation has managed to maintain its private status, a testament to their commitment to the legacy of William W. Cargill. But what about today? What are the Cargill Macmillans up to in our modern era? Well, they've continued the tradition of discretion, very much like our candy-loving Mars family. They're largely private individuals, eschewing the public limelight for a quieter life. But don't mistake their reticence for idleness. They are actively involved in the strategic management of the company and take keen interest in its diverse business ventures. In addition to their corporate responsibilities, the Cargill Macmillans also engage in philanthropy, focusing on environmental conservation, education and the arts. And thus, these old money families have shown that the American dream is often still alive and well, for those that dare to dream it. Be sure to visit the video description if you're interested in that lovely Masterworks offer. And as always, thank you for joining us at Old Money Luxury.